just about everything that runs on batteries, cell phones, laptops, electric cars, and numerous other devices would be improved with a better energy storage device. The battery continues to improve, but its basic concept hasn't changed much since it was developed back in the 19th century. What we're doing in our enhanced ultracapacitor project is rather than coating the plates of the capacitor with activated carbon, which is a bit like a sponge, we're actually using nanotechnology to grow a vertical array of thin carbon nanotubes directly out from the electrode of the ultracapacitor. Um, I made a model here which attempts to show that. Um, it's a little bit crude, but imagine that these dowels are actually the nanotubes growing up from the surface of the uh, capacitor or ultracapacitor. And these candies are meant to represent the ions in the electrolyte that get drawn in between the carbon nanotubes. If you want an analogy for the carbon nanotubes, it's a little bit like a grass lawn or like a shag rug or, or like a paintbrush. And just as a paintbrush can absorb more paint than a sponge, we expect that the carbon nanotubes will be able to absorb more ions from the electrolyte than, uh, than the traditional activated carbon material can do. Now, why is that important? Well, at 5% as much energy storage as a battery, ultracapacitors are still useful for a number of applications, but not for the mainstream applications where you simply want it to last a long time. Why should I put a device in my flashlight that will only run 25% as long when I can put a regular chemical battery in my flashlight. But on the other hand, if I could get the capacity of an ultracapacitor up by a factor of 5 or even 10, then it becomes a quarter or a half as, as powerful as my battery. And at that point, the advantages it has over a battery, which is that it doesn't wear out and it can charge and discharge very quickly, become extremely uh, important. And we believe that for many applications, a nanotube enhanced version of an ultracapacitor might actually be the, the technology of choice rather than a chemical battery. The experimenting that we're doing today, we have successfully been able to grow carbon nanotubes of the type that we need on a conducting substrate, and we have begun packaging that into a test cell so that we can verify that we do have the increased capacity that we predict. But we still need a few more months in order to refine that process, complete those measurements, and validate that we're indeed getting increased capacity. If we're successful at that, the next step is to scale the process up to a larger scale. The type of growth that we're using is, is done by a device called, a, a technology called chemical vapor deposition, which is very common in the semiconductor field. So there is a good prospect that the same type of manufacturing equipment that's used today for semiconductor manufacture could be adapted to manufacture this improved device on a large scale. So this is the system that we use in order to manufacture the carbon tube based the Bolaire capacitor electrode that we ultimately would like to assemble into a cell. And as uh, we discussed before, it is a chemical vapor deposition system. Here is the growth chamber where uh, we lay our electrode comprising of a catalyst and an underlayer. Once the condition of pressure and temperature are right, we introduce a mixture of gases and we obtain the self-assembly of the carbon tube based electrode in a matter of uh, five, five minutes or so. Uh, as you can see, there is a vacuum pump connected with this chamber. The uh, the growth is obtained in a low pressure environment to minimize impurities, to minimize uh, contamination from other species. Uh, on this side we can see a tube that basically inject, uh, like I was saying, the mixture of gases, a carbon feedstock, argon and hydrogen. Once the condition of pressure and temperature are right in order to yield the carbon tube growth, and here we have the gas mixing system is basically where we obtain uh, the mixture of gases we were talking about. And ultimately have the, we have the computer interface uh, 
de control, de controls the uh, operation of the whole system.